Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for uh, um, inviting Jaika and myself to this very important seminar in front of very uh, distinguished audience. The strength of Japanese ODA lies in human-to-human -human contact and creation of long-standing mutual trust at individual, community, as well as country levels. We have this principle in mind all the time. Even in time of crisis, such as emergency relief or supporting post-conflict situations, the same approach has been applied. But this COVID-19 posed a great challenge to our traditional business model. We revisited many other ways to continue our cooperation activities with partner countries, while the number of staff in the field reduced to only essential level, at least for a while. One of the ways that we found was knowledge co-creation and sharing on how to manage through this pandemic. Other models of cooperation in Asia in response to COVID-19 includes budget support in forms of loans co-financed with MDBs or standby loans together with policy components related to resilience building. Plus, very recently, there are extensive preparations going on to strengthen health systems at, and core hospitals, laboratories, research centers as a direct response to COVID-19 using our usual modalities such as loans and grants. Now back to our new business model, which is knowledge, co-creation and sharing. The water group in JICA, managing the largest water related ODA portfolio among the bilateral donor agencies, was the first in taking a strong initiative responding to the pandemic. We all shared in mind the number that WHO and UNICEF were referring to last year. Three billion people, or 40% of the world population, do not have access to water and soap at home. So how will they ever protect themselves? Even before the pandemic, the water cooperation was gradually diversifying from one-way technical or financial support to multi-layered, multi-directions cooperations network. Activities concentrated on the creation of water utilities managers learning network in both Asia and Africa, including Japanese local utilities. And in March and April this year, the water group of JICA, making full use of this network, began to intensively listen to partner utilities and respond to the very detailed needs such as chlorine and other chemical supply, protection of essential workers, and started a very active hand washing campaign. It was evident that many utilities our partner utilities had significant revenue reductions due to difficulty of water charge collection, decreasing industrial and commercial usage, as well as policies to suspend payments. At the same time, my colleagues compiled reference materials on what the Japanese utilities are doing during the pandemic to share to the network. Uh, this is a, a, a table that we are still working on, but in Asia, the countries that we are working very closely right now with regard to this uh, water response are Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Tajikistan. Through the process, we found that there was one super brilliant, outstanding utility, Wasa Lahore in Pakistan. You will hear from Mr. Zahid, Zahid Tosan, the mastermind in looking after workers and customers with so much passion. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Dr. Motosa and Mr. Gerard, for giving me the opportunity to explain the things we done, we did for the COVID uh, uh, eradication. My name is Zahid Aziz. I'm managing director of Basal Lahore. 
previously i was uh, heading another utility in the country but lahore is the second biggest city where i am working now it is uh in covid 19 uh, 19 the first case in pakistan was uh, uh appeared on 26 february this year and it was a big challenge for the country and for the utilities all utilities and since uh, i am also heading uh, the association of all utilities uh, and the lahore wasa is leading all in terms of the chairmanship so there was there was a big responsibility to respond to this challenge so a few slides i will show in my allocated time next please this is introduction of uh, my utility uh wasa lahore is responsible for uh, water supply sewerage storm water drainage facilities for lahore city which is second biggest in country 11 million people uh to fight against covid my presentation contains eight steps we took number one challenge was continuation of services because of the covid the financial crunch and all these things continuation was a challenge and second challenge was frontline workers their safety was a big uh, issue we wanted to make sure that our workers remain safe and then sustaining financial crunch because uh, of the low economic activity it was a big challenge for us to sustain and then general public we wanted to give uh, washing facilities hand washing facilities to general public beyond our routine work so this was challenge number 4 and then next challenge number 5 was to we we did something extra that we produced sanitizers in our facilities of wasa for our workers and for uh, some of other service providers as well then outdoor sprays and then support to health department by detection of covid 19 in sewage samples with the help of uh, collaboration of a university so this was a extra step we did and then information sa- sharing webinars with all utilities in country and in internationally we did some information sharing as well next please uh, the first uh, the continuation of services so on left side is the 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 steps we took to enable our workers to work from home and to reduce the staffing level of our offices so non critical sections were closed planning section finance section and people above 50 were uh, allowed to stay at home and to work from home and on the right side the online system were uh, uh, quickly introduced online pension system medical system and then the meetings uh, we started on online and then skeleton staff and the chlorinated water supply this was also uh, part of our continuation of services strategy next please then frontline workers we provided them the ppes sanitizers and then we wanted to them to have less exposure of the public so online systems uh, for mm-hmm. complaint management were uh, introduced for, uh, having all media whatsapp the facebook and the twitter and toll free numbers like this and financial crunch uh, to sustain it we we resorted to online billing online payments bill printing was already outsourced it helped us a lot to shift our headache of uh, bill printing and bill distribution was also outsourced this was again the headache of uh, bill distribution took away from wasa staff to the vendor and then ground water charges uh wasa got uh, we diverted our attention from industrial customers because there was no industrial or commercial activity so we opted to go for ground water abstraction charges from private housing society owners so this was just to bridge the revenue collection gap and then uh, hand washing facilities these these were the activities which we were not used to of doing so we in wasa mm-hmm. with the help of unicef and uh, other colleagues uh, 
uh, we did some outdoor washing arrangements so please open it water bowsers so these kind of water bowsers 20 bowsers were placed with the hand washing detergent and uh, the drainage arrangements so on 20 location these water bowsers were placed and 700000 plus people so far have benefited from these bowsers next please and then um, this kind of facility uh, the makeshift facilities uh, near vasta offices were created so that people can passer by could wash their hands next please and then hand washing drums which were used by pedals the pedals could uh, operate the taps and pedals could also operate the detergent uh, dispensing so this uh, without uh, intervention of hand these 50 drum mounted uh, hand washing facilities were established in the city and then uh, rickshaw mounted the distribution of uh, soaps to the low income communities it was done uh, along with the bill distribution we distributed uh, detergents uh, also the soaps also next and then this was something extra we did in uh, vasa laboratory the sanitizers were produced 7000 sanitizers were produced which were sufficient for vasa staff as well as other service providers in the city and on right side is the disinfectant uh we had already already sodium hypochlorite solution for uh, water disinfection but we diluted it and put it in bottles for surface cleaning of our offices and then hypochlorous acid we produced in our laboratory because it was the safest chemical to use to without irritation of eyes and the skin so therefore this was used in uh, hand washing tunnels uh, in the city next mist queens these mist queens were originally sewer jetting machines the sewer jetting machines were converted uh, into we put some nozzles and chlorinated water spray was done on the roads and it is still happening it gave uh, extra security and sense of uh, support to the citizens because they knew that the government was doing something for uh, them regardless of the effectivity but uh, still these were good helpful <laughs> gaining the confidence of the public trust of the public next walk through gates through hypochlorous acid was provided to different uh, public dwelling institutions in the city and then this was uh, something research related thing we did with the help of university of health sciences and university of veterinary and animal sciences that uh, sewer uh, sewage samples were collected uh, through our gis sewage network maps and we found out we traced the patients which were not uh, coming forward to disclose themselves and then we helped the health department to get the patients uh, known so therefore the smart lockdown was more effective because of this tracing of uh, uh patients through sewage analysis with the help of university so this was very effective tool and we could uh, you know isolate many areas having more patients next and then the information sharing through webinars of pakistan water operators network and global water operators partnership alliance the webinars were participated by wasa lahore and evon and then way forward the lesson learned is to introduce it in all activities to be paperless to uh, to uh, enable public to come online for payments and all the complaints and to outsource as much as possible so that the activities are outsourced and there is less pressure on the regular staff during any kind of pandemic situation and then to have contingency plans in every sector because if there is a machine fault we created some squads which were mobile squads to immediately react without exposing much of the staff to get the thing repaired on time and then sharing of knowledge between all utilities and stakeholders this is also a way forward and lesson learned thank you very much thank you zahid tosan 
Uh, we are still uh, trying to arrange uh, your presentation at our uh, network of uh, Asian utilities. Uh, we will talk, to, uh, talk about that later. Um, let me come back with other new approaches that, that JICA is trying under this pandemic. The key word is multi-sector urban planning. Japanese ODA in Asia has been very strong in providing quality infrastructure to support growth. But oftentimes, the planning methodology involved one single sector at a time, like water, sanitation, health, or transport. When the issue of climate change came into the picture more than a decade ago, we became aware of the opportunities lost and started to work on multi-sector planning for a common impact such as CO2 reduction and adaptation. So we will go forward with this multi-sectoral approach even under COVID-19. In particular, the attention to urban congested settlement or slums is all the more increasing. In the developing world, more than 1 billion people dwell in informal settlements. We have to take into consideration how people live, move, and earn their livings. How do they use and discharge water, as well as access health centers and hospitals? How about fecal and waste management? Where are the gravities of formal and informal economic activities? All of these together, have become important monitoring and policy parameters to find against pandemics. In, and I believe Wasalahor is already monitoring all these uh, uh, with uh, some IT innovation. So JICA's water, transport, and human development teams are now working together to create with our partners multi-sectoral solutions for congested areas, starting, for example, from simple things such as water facilities in health centers and schools, or hand washing facilities in transport hubs. So all in all, as conclusion, I would like to underscore that under COVID-19, JICA's business model is really changing towards multi-SDGs, knowledge co-creation, and peer learning with partners across Asia like Zahito san with mutual trust. Thank you very much. Thank you, both of you. I just wondered, Dr. Mito, if you could talk in two minutes just on how explicitly you work with um, agencies like WASA in Lahore, how, how JICA engages with particular agencies. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, <clears throat> important question that underlies everything. Um, one of the uh, very traditional modalities that we have here in JICA is technical cooperation, but it really involves, as I said at the outset, a human to human uh, relation building. Uh, um, as a typical case, um, there will be some uh, discussions with utilities such as uh, our Salahor, or in many other uh, Southeast Asian uh, countries as well, on what are the uh, bottlenecks for capacity building, especially on the technical engineering side. And uh, we try to uh, send, Jap for example, Japanese experts to solve the uh, specific uh, technical questions like how to detect leakage in uh, water pipes and so on. But gradually that uh, um, relationship evolves into what kind of managerial changes or a BCP challenges they, uh, they are uh, <clears throat> in order to become uh, uh, well-managed uh, uh, utility. So uh, the issues evolved and we planned uh, different technical assistance at each stage. And I think with uh, Lahore or throughout Pakistan, we have uh, organized uh, already several rounds of uh, technical assistance with different themes uh, each time. 
And uh, maybe uh, Zahidu-san can uh, um, complement me, but uh, there have been several rounds of uh, capacity building, both from the uh, frontline worker side, as well as uh, middle management to higher management uh, side. So it has been a very comprehensive relationship building. By the way, we are now uh, planning the next phase of uh, um, capacity building. I think it was more on the uh, I mean, uh, uh, training uh, trainers type of activities rather than uh, the direct uh, uh, training for uh, the front um, workers or the management. Am I correct, Tahito-san? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I must mention that uh, in water sector in Pakistan, the, the support we are getting from JICA is not unmatchable, you know, the kind of uh, improvements we got to JICA support in water sector are tremendous. Uh, I have been working in uh, Faisalabad city, I'm nowadays back to Lahore, and then many other cities, uh, because I'm uh, heading the organization of all water utilities in the country. Uh, on institutional improvement, on infrastructural improvement, on uh, capacity building, all three sectors, DACA is working with us. Uh, and uh, now the training academy project is coming up with the DACA support for training our trainers. So uh, I would understand, I would say that uh, this is the greatest support we have uh, in country, in water sector. Uh, a few questions I got uh, online also. Uh, one was about the research we did for the COVID uh, detection in the sewage sample. And the second one was the challenges, challenges we had in the rural populations about COVID. So can I reply to the question now? Or yes, yes, did? of course you may. <laughs> and then please, and to the other rest of the audience, please do keep the yeah. questions coming in. Actually, in uh, Pakistan, we heard that uh, there was some research done in Netherlands, in Australia, uh, etc about detection of uh, COVID-19, which is technically they call it SARS-CoV-2, to detect this uh, virus strain in the wastewater. And then this tool was quite, is quite useful to, uh, to in advance know about uh, any patient in the connected areas. So this was the theme to find the people. And then it was, the, the results were so tremendously, uh, you know, uh, important for us that the health department started depending on the sewage samples. And first we did sampling from our uh, pumping stations, wastewater pumping stations. And then we came upstream toward the household levels and we identified and isolated the streets having positive results. And then from streets, we entered into the household uh, uh, tanks, uh, the septic tanks, and from where the water was coming out. So in this way, there were 28 uh, localities we identified in Lahore. Uh, and then many streets and many houses were identified where the lockdown, smart lockdown was ensured. And the last lockdown in country, in Lahore especially, was ended on 30th of July. And when the lockdown end time was nearing, then there were almost zero cases in the sea waste samples. But when it started, there were plenty of uh, clusters we found. So this was a good indicator. And now uh, uh, we are going to go for uh, aeroplane, the testing of the plane which lands in Pakistan, in Lahore, especially in Lahore, to get the samples from the tank, septic tank, or the waste from the toilets of the plane. And then, if some positivity is found, then the groups of 10 persons will be tested and then isolated. So this is the way forward uh, we got, and the test is quite quick and very effective. So this was about the research. And challenges in the rural side. Uh, in rural areas in the country, the COVID challenges were uh, related with the international traveling. Uh, there are a few villages in uh, country 
from where people travel abroad more than the rest of the villages uh the people some people are living in europe especially for uh, letting with they came they come and go from our village population so the villages where the traveling was more were first hit but the rest of the villages fortunately remained uh, clear where there was no international traveling involved so those those were the challenges and uh, then because quarantine centers were established everywhere uh, in the schools in the uh, government buildings even in the villages so the initial surge was there of course in uh, march and april and ultimately it subsided after the uh, quarantines and the treatments and all that so now it is only 500 patients per day happen in the country which is uh, in the in the country of uh, when 200 million people is quite less number so we are fortunate but of course so we are conscious that uh, the second wave may come so the level of uh, care is still uh, there thank you could uh, you ask yes. uh, extend the jaikas covid 19 policies report in the case of wasa pakistan in west uh, actually the when whenever you talk about water sector project jaika comes first you know in lahore <laughs> only <laughs> in lahore only the replacement of pumping machinery of uh, water supply replacement of pumping machinery of sewage pumping the institutional improvement and capacity building all these things are happening with the jaika support and now jaika is supporting uh, the project is in pipeline to support p1 also to to address this covid issue although it is subsided the covid uh, pandemic is subsided and uh, reduced but uh, still we need to be on toes and we need to get uh, this this project which is in the pipeline from jaika side uh, we are looking forward in p1 to get it uh, started yes yeah maybe i uh, take this uh, question from jaika's uh, point of view thank you for the uh, very important question um, as uh, uh, you may have heard somewhere uh, <clears throat> um, else as well uh, jaika's uh, um, i mean a very important umbrella is uh, human security um this has been uh, uh, brought to our heart by uh, madam sadako ogata uh, who is uh, a un uh, uh, refugee uh, high level commissioner and came uh, uh, to be jaika's president and she installed in our hearts uh, what it is to we secure the right uh, environment the basic environment for people to thrive on their own and recently our president uh, kitaoka is uh, 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 creating a new version for this human security uh, which is really to uh, think of new um, risks Uh, these risks can be natural disasters climate change related as well as pandemic like this covid-19 and um <clears throat> i can uh, say that when we uh, got into this covid-19 situation all of my staff at that time i was uh, uh, heading the global environment department uh, where the water group is in Uh, they were all concerned about uh, how people wash their hands how people uh, keep their nutrition going what will be the uh, food security issue in this country and that country so uh, our philosophy or, or code of uh, um, activity thinking is really cent uh, centralized uh, focused on that human security uh, concept and in case of uh, uh, interacting with uh, zahid dosan as well uh, my colleague in uh, i think uh, pakistan uh, um, 
uh, they were calling or maybe e I mean uh, um, yeah, sending WhatsApp to uh, uh, the hito san and really listening to the um, uh, needs. And I think uh, it, in this case, uh, it was really uh, the chemicals that was uh, um, of urgent uh, necessity. And we are now uh, trying to procure uh, additional chemicals to uh, support uh, the hito san Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, like, like I say, please do keep your questions coming in. One point that you both talked about is the importance of networks and knowledge sharing. And I wondered, um, Fred Zahid, if you could explain how the steps you took in Lahore, how they were disseminated elsewhere in Pakistan, and perhaps a follow-up to Dr. Muto. I mean, many of South Asia's mega cities face very similar problems yes. in water management. And I wonder if the steps taken in Lahore, if there's any way of creating a positive engagement with Pakistan's neighbor to its east and you know, potentially elsewhere in South Asia, and whether Japan might be well positioned to do so. But say does is. Maybe uh, I the same can, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, actually, I could not get properly the, I could not hear properly uh, the question and the comments. Apologies. Um, was there a process by which the steps you took in Lahore were replicated elsewhere in Pakistan? So, so uh, what I can read, the same question, uh, the financial thing you are asking, because the voice level is quite low from your side. So, but uh, I can read uh, the financial issues. <laughs> the no, we'll, we'll, turn, we'll turn to that in a moment. I was wondering about how the actions you took in Lahore, were they replicated in Karachi and Islamabad? Okay. okay. How did you engage elsewhere in Pakistan? Yeah, yeah. So it's a good question. Uh, we did a seminar also, webinar, for all utilities in the country. Uh, and uh, in that webinar, uh, uh, all the information was shared with our colleagues. And other than the webinar, uh, we have a WhatsApp group of all water utilities in the country. So all heads of uh, water utilities in the country, including Karachi, including, uh, you know, there are 14 big utilities in the country. So there was uh, everyday knowledge sharing like Mist Queen which was introduced in Lahore. The name was very uh, romantic name of the Supreme Machine. The, the same Miss Queens were, uh, you know, replicated in Karachi, in Peshawar, Islamabad, in all cities, all big cities in the country. And as, as uh, Dr. Uh, Motosa said that the trust building was important with the public. So although the effect of the walk through tunnels and uh, the mist queens was may not be so high effectiveness for the COVID prevention, but uh, the trust level was high in the public that the utilities were working for that. So almost all of the steps which were taken in Lahore, uh, with the exception of few, were replicated in other cities, but Lahore took the lead. Thank you very much. As for uh, how uh, we would disseminate this excellent experience to other utilities in Asia, um, usually uh, uh, we do an annual utility managers uh, conference, one in Asia, uh, one in Africa uh, each year. Um, but with this uh, COVID-19 situation, we cannot uh, um, meet uh, physically. So my colleagues are now uh, uh, starting this uh, preparation for an online one. But we have to learn so much from uh, um, Pakistan on how to uh, disseminate through WhatsApp and uh, um, all the new uh, uh, technologies uh, right on time. I mean, uh, there is no need to prepare a big, big uh, conference uh, uh, for that purpose uh, per se. But we will combine and uh, uh, work together with uh, uh, leaders like Tahito San in disseminating the experience internationally. Thank you much. And in Asia in particular. I, I can see questions also, the financial issues. 
the yes, experience. Yes, if you want to turn to the financial issues question and engagement with government at different levels, please. Yeah, the one question was about the financial support uh, Vasta is getting from the government. Uh, actually, the government was also in the financial stress because of the less uh, taxation and uh, more resources diverted to COVID-19. All the development funds were diverted from the development sector to the COVID-19 by the government. And uh, even the VASA, which gets some property tax share, was also reduced because property tax share was exempted from the public. So public was facilitated, but the tax share which VASA was supposed to get was reduced. So I would say in COVID-19, VASA and all utilities had to find their own ways to find resources because government was already under pressure for extra work they did for uh, COVID prevention. And uh, the next question is how Pakistan is distinguishing between uh, individuals with COVID-19 and other diseases. This is a complex situation because COVID-19 is a new, was a new disease and the medical professionals were often confused between other diseases and the COVID-19 uh, issues. And sometimes the diagnosis was a big problem. But ultimately they could identify the difference between typhoid and the COVID-19. And uh, that's why nowadays the COVID wards of the hospitals are almost empty. So now at this moment, uh, COVID arrangements are there in hospital, but with no patients. Uh, so probably they could find out the medical professionals were able to identify COVID-19 and other diseases. As for the finance issues, as I have uh, mentioned in my uh, uh, opening remarks, uh, we have been doing uh, uh, extensive uh, budget support uh, with partners like uh, ADB, for many Asian countries. I can name from my list here, Philippines, Bangladesh, Indonesia, India, uh, and then the next batch is uh, Maldives, uh, Cambodia, and more will come. So that's in general the approach that we are taking in order to uh, help uh, not just utilities, uh, water utilities, but uh, uh, government uh, budget in general. Plus, as for uh, at the ut uh, utility level, let me share one example from Palestine, Jenan. Um, we have been uh, piloting uh, prepaid water meters there and uh, uh, it was like an experiment. Um, uh, what will happen with uh, prepaid water meters uh, during uh, uh, the pandemic, I mean, uh, shocks like this. And it revealed that wh when, where uh, uh, water meet, I mean, prepaid water meters were uh, uh, introduced in that quarter, I mean, there has been a 100% uh, collection, of course, by definition. But then uh, the comparison group, um, uh, only 42%. So uh, um, I'm not saying uh, that is uh, the uh, magic solution, but some combination of these uh, um, uh, financial, uh, I would say, uh, tools um, can be uh, um, uh, can soften the uh, shock uh, borne by utilities. Thank you. Uh, there is another question. I can see another question from New York. City about uh, Nagumi San's uh, point of new approach for co creation of knowledge. How, how we can use this co creation of knowledge for um, how it was helpful? Uh, I would give one example. Uh, the example is also sought by the questioner that, uh, you know, when there was a trend of uh, making uh, walkthrough gates almost every shopping place and the worship place and uh, the offices, they started constructing walkthrough tunnels or walkthrough gates. And uh, nobody was sure what chemical they should spray on the individuals <laughs> passing through gates. Even some uh, of them even born for the, uh, you know, the chemicals which were hazardous for uh, skin and the eyes. Even the chlorine was not good. Uh, for the skin and even the bleaching effect was there on the clothes also because black clothes could become white after the 
spray of the bleaching affect chlorine so this was a big thing and uh, even the health department including health department everybody was new for this uh, issue so vasa lahore took the lead and vasa laboratory uh, found out that only one chemical was useful for this kind of spray on the humans that was hypochlorous acid because this is used for cleaning of eyes also so it was good for the skin and eyes no bleaching effect and no hazard hazard uh, attached with this chemical so this chemical was not available in the market so vasa lab prepared it in the laboratory itself and now the masks mass scale preparation uh, instrument uh, and the equipment is being imported to unicef support but the pilot production was done by vasa from its own sources and now the same hypochlorous acid vasa suggested to health department and then health department also evaluated it and they agreed that this was the right chemical for the tunnel not the detol or not the uh, sodium hypochlorite solution etc so this is how the knowledge sharing helped each other in covid thanks just very quick on knowledge sharing um this uh, covid 19 it's new for everyone i mean be it a uh, industrialized nation or a developing nation uh, we are all equal in uh, uh, creating a knowledge for this covid 19 that is uh, one thing and uh, uh, as a follow up uh, i can also say that we are becoming more horizontal um, in terms of uh, um, what we know in what to make a, a better world what to do uh, um, uh, to create a common global goods um, so in looking ahead uh we have decided that co-creation of knowledge really learning together is the way to go thank you that's a positive note to end on i think and mm -hmm. i'd like to thank both of you both of our speakers and uh, the audience for listening and for sending in your questions it's been a very helpful and interesting both in understanding how japan conceives of development and the case study and, and congratulations for your success in the horse mm -hmm. thank you all Thank you. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita.